respected teachers, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, a very good morning to one and all present here. Well, we've come back after a long holiday, and I'm pretty sure that each one of us present here must have had a good holiday and a good experience. Well, even I've had one such experience, but I do not know whether to call that experience a good experience or a bad experience. But yes, this experience has sort of changed my life. To be more precise, brothers and sisters, I had undergone a surgery, a minor surgery. And that five minutes that I had spent in that operation theater on that operation bed has sort of changed my life upside down. I was lying down on the operation bed and the doctor came in to inject me with an injection. And I was curious to know that what kind of injection is it? I asked him, sir, what kind of injection is it? He said, son, this is anesthesia. I asked him, why are you giving this injection to me? He said, we're giving this injection to you so that you would go off to a deep sleep or an unconscious state so that we can, we can you know, operate you well. I asked him, sir, what if I don't come back from that deep sleep? He said, son, that won't happen. Then I again asked him, sir, what if I die in that deep sleep or what if I die in that unconscious state? All the assistant doctor and the doctor paused for a moment. And then the doctor replied and he said, son, that is not in our hand. So brothers and sisters, that day in the operation theater, on that operation bed, I learned a unique lesson of life. I learned that death is not in our hand. I learned that death is not in our control. Because death is unpredictable. Brothers and sisters, every next moment of our life could be our last moment. Brothers and sisters, every next moment of our life could be our last moment. Now, when I, when I know this fact that every next moment of our life could be our last moment, and when I look back in my past, I see the number of times I've fought with my friends, the number of times I've fought with my brother. And I, and I think to myself, what if I fought with my brother and the next moment my brother died? What if I fought with my friends and the next moment my friend died? Trust me, brothers and sisters, I would have sat beside their dead bodies and I would have cried and I would have regretted for having fought with them. I would have regretted for having not spoken to them for days and for weeks, brothers and sisters. And I know many of you present here. I know friends who have not spoken to each other for days and for months. I know, I know classmates who have not spoken to each other in hostel. I know, I know roommates who have not spoken to each other for days and for months, brothers and sisters. Do not do this mistake. I have done it and I, and I regret for having done it. Brothers and sisters, once this talk, once this function is over, brothers and sisters, go and reunite with your friends. Go and, and tell them how sorry you are feeling. Go and hug them. Go and tell them how much you love them, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, I know many of you present here today who think, who think, I know many of you present here today who think that they and their wealth will last forever. For such people today, I give an example from the life of Alexander the Great, from the life of Sikandar Azam. For those of you who do not know, this is the man who at the age of 25 had the largest empire in the human history. And when this man at the age of 30 falls ill and he realizes that his time is up, and he realizes that his time is up, he calls his general and he makes his last wish. He makes his last wish. He says, oh men, he says, oh men, when I die, he says, oh men, when I die and you put my body in the coffin, let my hands be dangling outside the coffin with my palms wide open. His generals were surprised at this bizarre wish of Alexander. They asked him, what is the reason? He said, when I die, I want the whole world to know and I want the whole world to see that I am the same Alexander who conquered the whole world. And when I'm leaving the world that I've conquered, I'm leaving it empty handed. Brothers and sisters, this is the harsh reality of life. This is the harsh truth of life. That we come with an empty hand and we go back with an empty hand, brothers and sisters. Well, I would end my speech with one last example. Imagine your exams are three months away from you. And I ask you, when is your exam? You would say, my exams are three months away. And then I would ask you, are you preparing for your exam? You would say, of course I'm preparing for my exam. Imagine my exams are a month away from you. And I ask you, are you preparing for your exams? You would say, of course I'm preparing for my exams. Imagine now your exams are a week away from you. And I ask you, when is your exam? 
you would tell me my exams are a week away and then i would ask you are you preparing for your exam you would say yes i'm preparing for my exam but imagine your exam is tomorrow and i ask you are you preparing for your exam you would say i am prepared for my exam or i am preparing now brothers and sisters now i ask you one more question when is your death can anyone in the audience answer this question of mine none of you could answer that none of you can answer this question of mine because we do not know when are we going to die because every next moment of a life could be a last moment now that we know that every next moment of a life could be a last moment i ask you one more question are you prepared for your death if you not start prepare thank you so much